Hello all and welcome to this Friday afternoon's beer review, which is a definitely a lazy Friday afternoon in nothing but play civilization. And um, yeah, I don't feel too guilty about it because at least, you know, that particular bad habit is not affecting my health overly much. I'm, I'm probably going to have to go and cut back on a whole bunch of things, alcohol being one of them, but um, more importantly, coffee. I am a caffeine fiend. I don't rev That's a funny thing. It's like I don't actually like energy drinks. I don't actually like coffee all that much. I'm just a caffeine addict. I do really like tea, but tea doesn't have all that much caffeine, you know? So, I... I Really, I, I, I'm just starting to have stomach problems, so, you know, just in the process of undergoing a treatment for it, as well as, you know, tempering off certain things, I'm finding out that, yeah, what it is, it really um, irritates my stomach lining. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So, what are we reviewing today? Well, the next thing from the uh, pumpkin box set here, the Elysian Brewing Company box set. This is the Great Pumpkin Imperial Pumpkin Ale. That is... Let's read this here. The Great Pumpkin is the world's first Imperial Pumpkin Ale. It's packed with... Really? The world's first? Hmm. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. It's a claim. It's packed with pumpkin and spiced with cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. This is 8.4 ABV by volume, and it's unfiltered, so it's going to be pretty cloudy. So, let's go and read the actual thing here. Great. I forgot that I closed out the window. <laughs> My bad. The Great Pumpkin was the world's first Imperial Pumpkin Ale, brewed with Pale, Munich, Carahel, Caravian, Caramunich, and C45 Crystal Malts. Extra pumpkin added in the mash, kettle, and fermenter. Spice with cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. So, all in all, a pretty heavy beer. So, let's open this up, shall we? I had this on the counter for like almost 20 minutes right now. Really wanted to get it nice and warm. It might be a little bit too warm at this point because it's hot out. Okay. Two fingers worth of orange beige head does have a tinge of orange to it. Coloration. When you get the light going through it, it looks really pumpkin colored. Um, I'm wondering if they're going through that. And pretty well carbonated. You know, it's pretty cloudy, so you can't see it. You know, opalescent. But it's pretty well carbonated for something this high ABV. Got cinnamon in the nose. Come on. Back here, back here. <laughs> Cinnamon, followed by the allspice. <sighs> this camera, I I should really just get rid of it. I mean, this camera is really old. Back here, back here. It also lacks the ability to actually manually focus it, you know, otherwise I would just put it at middle distance constantly. Okay. So cinnamon, allspice. Clove. Don't really catch the nutmeg too much in the nose here, maybe just a little bit. <clears throat> Overall, a fairly robust, biscuity to almost cakey malts, fairly robust in the nose there. 
Not really catching much in the way of hopping in the nose either. Ah. So quite a bit of spice and malts, no hopping really in the nose. Okay, on to the palate now, shall we? Yeah, some bittering hops in the in the finish there. But what's really interesting is that you definitely get almost like a liquid pumpkin pie like note in the midst there. You definitely get a lot of that pumpkin puree kind of taste in the in the midst. But up front, there is that really, really strong, you know, <clears throat> um, pumpkin spice. Very chewy, very thick, somewhat oily. The main drawback of this, though, is that the top note in the front and the mids is really dominated by booziness. You know, there's a really strong alcohol note there. And that's kind of to be expected with something that's at, an, you know, this ABV level. There's also quite a bit of booziness on the palate as well. Not as much as in the nose, but on the palate as well, in the front. And it kind of interferes with that nice sort of pumpkin pie flavor that you get in the mids, where uh, the, you know, um, the malts, the puree, and the spice all come together all at once on the palate. Yeah. Man. There's the thing about it. This would be a really, really, really good pumpkin ale if it wasn't so darn boozy. You know, it's just... Um, and that booziness, it, it just kind of obscures all the nicer notes and the top notes and on the palate. So there's also a nuttiness in the front to mids. In the hop finish, there's not really too much dimensionality to that hop finish, just some sort of bittering in the finish. Doesn't play too well with the booziness either. It's really sad because, like I said, in the mids, there really is a strong, like, pumpkin pie note there. You get kind of like, um, puree, the pumpkin puree, the spice, and just the malting kind of comes together with a sort of, like, breadiness, biscuitiness that sort of evokes pie, pie crust, as it were.
Mm. Man, each time I take a sip, it's, it's like up front and into the mid, it's pretty good, but then the mid to finish is like just like really slaps you up the head with the booziness. It's really quite the shame, because like I said, it's quite good, except for that massive, you know, taste of kind of um, cheap alcohol, you know, it's just too, well, I, overproof is probably not the right word for it, but it's just too much alcohol. It's almost like if they had just pulled it back a little bit, you know, maybe made this around like a 7.5, um, you know, while keeping that amped up kind of pumpkin puree, it probably would have been something really, really good, but as it is, I, I can't, I can't say this is a great pumpkin ale, even though it's hitting all of those notes that I'm looking for, particularly the taste of pumpkin itself, just because that it's obscured, and there's not much else to say about it other than that. So, the Great Pumpkin. You know, your mileage may vary with this. So, I would say give this one a shot and see what your reaction to it is. Because I think there's a Great Pumpkin Ale in here. But by my own palate, it's just too boozy. Other people may think otherwise. So, I think this is one of those ones where, you know... Um, opinions can vary quite strongly because this is actually the highest rated one out of the box set if you go by like Beer Advocate. Whereas for me, you know, it's um, one of the weaker ones, honestly. <clears throat> so, yeah, I I'm probably in the minority. And that, folks, is your beer review for this evening. Cheers.